Welcome back to Tunnel Vision, Tideways YouTube series bringing you behind the scenes content on London Super Sewer. In today's episode, we're in the Royal Borough of Greenwich, but before we get into that, I need you to do me a favor and subscribe. It will really help us spread the word about this amazing environment and project, and you'll never miss any of our content. Now let's get on with the show. In this episode of Tunnel Vision, we're in the lovely Greenwich, birthplace to King Henry VIII and me. I'm Priya Messadine, the Internal Communications Manager at Tideway, and in today's episode, we visit the Greenwich Pumping Station. This Grade II listed building was built way back in 1865, 156 years ago, and is today operated by Thames Water. It was built as part of Sir Joseph Bazalgette's sewerage master plan to clean up London's waterways and protect Londoners' health. It was built right next to Deptford Creek, also known as the River Ravensbourne. Now the story behind the name Ravensbourne is fascinating. During the Roman invasion of Britain in the year 55 BC, Julius Caesar and his army were camping near Keston Common in Bromley. Nearby, Caesar noticed a raven flying in and out and concluded that it must be stopping to take a drink. Well, not long later, a spring was found and it was called Raven's Well, later becoming Ravensbourne. Much later, in the 11th century, the Doomsday Book recorded an astonishing 11 corn mills on the Ravensbourne. The river also has a rich history of rebellion, with the followers of Watt Tyler and later of Jack Cade quenching their thirst in the river. Today though, the only people that you'll generally find in the River Ravensbourne are those from the Creekside Discovery Centre, but more on them later. But now, let's head over to site to find out what's happening at Greenwich Pumping Station. I'm here at Greenwich Pumping Station today with Daniel Lafori Atta, who is a student civil engineer. Daniel, how did you make it here to Tideway? I go to the University of Surrey and they have a scholarship scheme with the Institute of Civil Engineers, which then matches a few students to different companies, which allows us to get trained up before moving into industry. So I got matched with Costain and through my years in uni, they've put me on different projects. So I'm currently here on Tideway with the Greenwich team. Great. And so this isn't your first placement? No, so my first one was actually on M1 Smart Motorways. So I had some highways engineering experience before now coming to get some tunnel engineering experience. Cool. And how does Tideway compare? Tideway is great. I've learned an incredible amount because um, I've been here for almost about 12 months now. I'm just coming towards the end. And I've learned everything, almost everything there is to know about a tunnel. So what happens here? So here we're tunnelling 4.6 kilometres to Chambers Wharf and we're going to go through um, Deptford Church Street and Old Pumping Station before arriving at Chambers Wharf. So I'm very excited to be here. Um, am I allowed to have a tour? Of course, if you follow me, we can go and have a look at the site. Well, let's go. Daniel, tell us about what's going on in this section of the Phoenix Wharf site. What's, what's all this? So this site, as you said, is called Phoenix Wharf and this is where we have our water treatment and our slurry treatment. So all the waste from the tunnel, which is gone, taken through the TBM, all comes up through here and is treated before being discharged, as you can see below. It's then moved on into the barges, which is then taken away to be treated. And that allows us to save bringing lorries to site, which is good for the environment. Yeah. If you want, we can go and check if there's a barge out back. Yeah, well, let's go. Oh, what's this? It looks like a spa. So this is the water that's treated on our site. So over here you have our B7 tank, and that is all the water that comes directly from the TBM. And that is then taken off to here. Mm -hmm. And onto that tank as well, the B14 tank, where it's treated further. And then that is where it ends up before being discharged. So in the filter presses, we produce filter press cakes and that is where all the water is squeezed out and drops down to create a dry sort of cakey material and that is then taken into the barge together. Can we go in to have a look? Yeah, of course. Let's go. This is a great view. So how big are those barges? 
So one of these barges holds 500 tonnes and that takes about 50 lorries off the road. So it doesn't look like that barge is in action at the minute, so how often do they, do they leave? Deptford Creek is quite tidal, so at the moment you can see the barge is sitting on the riverbed, but soon, once the tide comes up, then it'll be good to go. So the spoil I've seen at other sites is brown, how come this is white? The majority of the ground that we're actually excavating is chalk, so all of, most of what you see is chalk waste. Um, yeah, so if you want, we can actually go and see where it all comes from. Oh yes please. I've never been in a shed before. So now we're just going to head. Well, this is pretty big. Yeah, so this is our shed. It's all acoustically treated. As you can see, it's a lot noisier inside. Yeah. Um, the reason for that is because it's a very urban area. So there's a lot of apartments around here. So having it acoustically treated means that it blocks out a lot of sound. Yeah, you wouldn't know all of this is happening outside. Yeah, there's so much going on in here. If you want, we can see the shaft from the top view. Yeah. Just above here. How far up are we? I mean, how far down is the bottom? So this is 50 meter deep shaft. And as you can see there, that's just where we go into the tunnel. And yeah. So how do we get down there? Uh, looks like a lot of steps. <laughs> Lucky for you, we have a passenger hoist. So we will just go down there and we'll be lifted straight down. Great. So how wide is the tunnel? So this tunnel is 6.4 meters wide in diameter. So is this the loco? Yeah, so this is one of our locos. As you can see, it carries one of our rings. So for, on this tunnel, one ring is, consists of six segments, which all come up together, as you can see around us as well. Very cool. This is incredible. How far have we just walked? So we've just walked about just over 500 meters. Because as you can see, we're just over ring 300 at the back. Yeah. So that's each ring is about 1.5 meters. So how far is the TBM digging? So the TBM is going 4.6 kilometers before we break through at Chambers Wharf. And we're currently about, give or take, 600, 700 meters in. And what do these concrete segments do? So these are, these are the bones of the tunnel basically. So behind that we grout it, so grout fills behind and then that causes a seal between the tunnel, the segments and the ground itself. Yeah. And then once we're done tunneling the whole tunnel, we'll then do secondary lining where we'll line another layer of concrete around the entire width of the tunnel. So it'll be a whole smooth finish going right through. And how does it feel to work on a project that's going to have such an impact on London? Yeah, it's really good actually. I didn't think I'd ever end up on such a big project at such an early age, especially as it's something to help the future generations for the next 120 years. So it's really good. So there you go, Greenwich Pumping Station. And on the other side of the creek is the Creekside Discovery Centre. Amid this bustling metropolis of train stations, new housing developments and industry, you'll find an urban wildlife charity which is keeping the creek flourishing with life. Here on Tideway, we want to play a role in improving the communities in which we work in. That's why we've partnered with the Creekside Discovery Centre to offer local families free and low cost activities to help them learn and care for the ecology in the creek. Let's head inside to find out more. Hi. Hi Jill. Priya. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm Jill Goddard, manager of the centre. Nice to and meet you. I'd like to show you around. Cool. Okay, so we've got our classroom in here, Priya, with a school in. These are some of the things we found. A cool. nice fish tank, fish out the creek. Great collection ah. of shoes, all found in the creek by people coming on low tide walks. Toilets, obvious. Nice waterproof coats. Our little kitchen. Benches for when you are going to do the piece de resistance and get your waders oh, on. Lots of shoes. Exactly. So a lot of kids around here have never owned a pair of waders or Wellingtons actually and so we provide everything and the idea is it doesn't matter rich or poor mm -hmm. you can come and experience the creek. So Jill what activities do you run here at the centre? Well we're very good at running school activities, primary, secondary school just started 
and public low tide walks. And what has the money that Tideway has invested in the centre gone towards? Well, that is allowing us to grow to what we always wanted, adult activities and more training in terms of wildlife and the creek. What we had on Saturday is the first wildlife mapping where we're teaching people how to use a recording form for what really wildflowers are. Not weeds, we all call them weeds, but they're going to map where in the streets they are and that will go into a national database and then other people can replicate that all over the country. The training, we're doing creek know-how training because a tidal foreshore is dangerous. We know how to manage it safely. We're going to share that with the public. Great, sounds good. So Kelly, you're Tideways Community Investment Manager. What does that mean? It means that I look after all the community investment on Tideway. I primarily work with the contractors in East, West and Central, but I also look after our charity partnerships on, on Tideway. We've just started up a brand new partnership with the Creekside Centre. So why did Tideway decide to invest here? Well, this is our biggest investment in East London. It started back in November and actually you might think that's quite a tricky time because of COVID, but what that allowed to happen was for Creekside had a bit of downtime to really plan properly about what this partnership will bring to the local community. So for me, that was a massive benefit. It's our biggest investment in East London and Creekside shares so many of our legacy commitments and it helps us deliver against our vision about reconnecting people to the river. And it's also about cohesive communities. As you can see you have big new developments going on around this area but you've also got people that have lived here for many many years so Creekside gives that great opportunity to bring all these people together and and kind of work on these amazing opportunities Creekside bring. Makes perfect sense. That's it thanks for watching keep those likes and comments coming in and we'll see you next time on Tunnel Vision.